Welcome back. I'm Teacher Lisa, your ESL video instructor. Today we're going to continue our discussion on intermediate socializing skills, how you can improve your conversation skills. We've already done chapters one and chapter two. If you'd like a copy of this document completely for free, the link is in the description. It'll take you to my Gumroad store and you can download it and follow along or just look at my shared screen. So let's go to chapter three. And today we're going to really get into those expressions, phrases, and questions you can ask when starting a conversation and how to continue a conversation. You should know from the first two chapters, if you missed those videos, I'll link it in the description. Small talk is very, very important in American spoken English. You have to be able to do this very well. Let me repeat that. You have to be able to engage in small talk and do it very well. So let's look at some of the things you can talk about to initiate or start a conversation. Let's look at some actual phrases and questions. So here on the document, we have the first four points. Uh, first of all, don't forget to introduce yourself properly. You may think this is very simple, but it's actually overlooked quite a bit because some cultures you don't formally introduce yourself. This is important in the American culture. So just simply say, hi, hello, hey, any of those things will work. And then a polite introduction. Hi, my name is Lisa. What's your name? I'm here in the Philippines. Most of you know that. And when people speak English, they don't introduce themselves. They just start talking. And we get a few sentences into the conversation. And I'm thinking, who are you? <laughs> they forgot to introduce themselves. So it's very important when speaking English to do this. What else can you do to start a conversation? Well, show genuine interest. Let's go down to number two. You can say something like, I love your outfit. Where did you get it? So just compliment them something on something they're wearing. Outfit means what you're wearing. Uh, nice hat. Where'd you get that? I love those sneakers. Uh, where did you get it? Number three, shared hobbies and interests. So you can ask, do you enjoy playing sports? Do you enjoy playing tennis? Hey, wow, I see you have a set of golf clubs in the back of your car. Do you enjoy playing golf? Where do you play? It just gets the conversation going. Remember, small talk is starting conversations about things that are not very important. So some students dismiss small talk because they think, I, I don't care. I just want to get to the meat of the conversation or the important points. But you really have to start with small talk when you meet someone for the first time. Current events and news, number four. This is important, so you should keep up with the news. I know in some cultures you don't keep up with the news very much, but it's important in the U.S. You should know generally what's going on in the news and in your area, and you can use that to start and engage in conversations. Go. Let's go to number five, weather and seasons. So talking about the weather is great. You can say, beautiful weather today, isn't it? I used to live in Texas, and weather was very important. The heat in the summer gets very hot, so we would often talk about the weather with strangers. Wow, I can't believe how hot it is today. Oh, my goodness. It's almost 100 degrees today. We use Fahrenheit in the U.S. I can't believe it's going to be 100 degrees. It's going to top 100 degrees. I can't believe that. Wow. Travel and vacations, number six. What can you say? Have you ever been to Paris? Or have you ever been to my native country? Have you ever been to Brazil? Have you traveled to Mexico before? I'm from Portugal. Have you ever visited there? Or I'm, tr I'm taking a trip soon. I'm planning a trip soon, too. So those are good ways to start conversations, some good topics that we just discussed. Okay, you can review these if you download the document in more detail. Next one, ask open-ended questions. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you want a conversation to continue, you have to learn to ask appropriate questions, but open-ended. That means you cannot answer the question. You cannot answer the question with a simple yes or no. Why do we want open-ended questions? Because we want more information 
from the other person we're talking to. It will end the conversation quickly if you can answer yes or no. So we'll give you some examples of that. Of course, starting questions with what, how, why, or tell me about will help you with asking open-ended questions. So here's some examples. If I said, did you enjoy the movie? Did you enjoy the movie? You can answer that with a simple yes or no. And then the conversation ends. You have to create another question. You have to push the conversation forward. Let's make our life easier. Isn't it better to ask, what did you like most about the movie? What did you like most about the movie? Now they have to explain. They have to tell you more. And once you get more information, you can easily move the conversation forward. So try to practice asking open-ended questions. Okay, here are some examples of open-ended questions. Okay, we have a few here. I'll just read through them. How do you usually spend your weekends? Well, that's an easy one. I use that a lot. How was your weekend? Even when I meet with a student and we're talking, before I even start the lesson, I engage in small talk. How did your weekend go? Did you do anything special on the weekend? The next one, just tell me about your favorite hobbies or interests. What do you think about the current political situation? How did you come to learn English? I've used that one in class before. Everyone has a different story and journey. You can ask that too. What are your thoughts on the latest movie release? Tell me more about your most memorable travel experience. All of these things, class, you can use to start conversations. So there's plenty. There's plenty to talk about. Okay, next subheading. Please be sure to make sure you're showing genuine interest in the other person. Don't be fake about it because the other person will see that. So if you want to be better at conversation, show genuine interest. Okay, examples of open-ended questions. We have a few more. What did you enjoy most about your job? So if you meet someone and you ask them, what do you do for a living? That's a good question. What do you do for a living? What industry are you in? If they say, oh, I'm an electrical engineer, I'm a nurse, ask them, what do you enjoy most about your job? How long have you been a nurse? And go from there. How did you become interested in that hobby is another open-ended question. All right, let's continue. All right. Participating in group discussions. This can be pretty challenging for ESL students when multiple people are speaking. I have so many students that tell me, uh, Teacher Lisa, I enjoy talking one-on-one -on -one with you, but oh, in the group it's difficult. And some of you have been in group classes that I've held in the past on a previous platform, and you've engaged in group conversation. What does it require that's very different than one-on-one -on -one conversation? You have to listen to the opinion of others, and then you have to add and build on what's already been said. Or if your opinions differ, you have to be able to express yourself without offending the other person, but knowing how to acknowledge the other person's thoughts and feelings. So that's what you want to graduate to, not just being comfortable one-on-one, -on -one, but in a group setting. So let's look at some effective strategies and some phrases. So the first thing you have to do is do very well at active listening really paying close attention what the other person says. Listen, it's important in American spoken English to maintain eye contact. Some people think this makes you dishonest if you don't have eye contact. It's not about being honest or dishonest. Making eye contact is important to maintain the line of communication and show interest. Actually, I don't like talking to people who don't make eye contact. It doesn't mean, oh, I don't trust them. It shows you're not interested. In some cultures, it's disrespectful. It is not disrespectful in the American spoken English. You must maintain eye contact. Okay. It doesn't mean you can't look away 
We don't want you staring at the person and not blinking, but maintain eye contact. Please learn, number two, ask for clarification. If you don't understand something in spoken English, if it's appropriate, when it's appropriate, ask. How can you do that? Could you please explain that in more detail? That's a good question. Could you please explain that in more detail? Maybe you need more information. Or, I'm not sure I understood. Could you repeat that? Or, what I like better than that, which I teach my students, instead of could you repeat that, because if you ask that question, they will repeat the same thing the same way. So it's better to ask this question. Can you say that another way? I didn't understand. So you're forcing the other person to use different words if the issue is more vocabulary or the sentence structure or how it's phrased. So ask that way. Could you please repeat that another way? I didn't understand. Not just please repeat that because we don't know what needs to be repeated. What was the issue? Number three, expressing your opinion. Uh, please try to move away from I think, I think. That can be very heavy. Sometimes it's okay, but you don't want to start questions or rather your responses with, I think, I think. How about, in my opinion, I believe that from my perspective. This is great for when you're on interviews and the interviewer might ask you your thoughts on a certain process or the company or your role or some idea. You don't want to say, well, I think... But rather, in my opinion, I believe that, or from my perspective, it's a little bit softer and it's more respectful and more considerate. Okay, number four, building on others' ideas. So if somebody says something in a group setting, so we're still really talking about within the group, I agree with that, right? I agree with, uh, sorry, I agree with what was earlier said, and I also like to add that and your idea. Okay, so let's go back. I agree with what was said earlier. Like I agree with what Jose said earlier. I agree with what Maria said earlier. And I would also like to add that and then your idea. Or that's a great point that Helen made. In addition to that, I think so you're acknowledging the person's contribution and then adding your point. Um, if you do it that way, the audience or who you're talking to will be more likely to receive your idea. Think about that. How does that make you feel if somebody used your name and acknowledged your point? Uh, that's a great point that Lisa made. You know, in addition to that, I think we should blah, 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 blah. I feel good. Oh, they're listening to me. Okay, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. Also, seeking consensus. Uh, consensus means agreement. So sometimes we are trying to get agreement within the group for decision making. So we can say, well, let's weigh the pros and cons, right? The good things and the bad things. Or perhaps we can find a compromise. So I like this sentence here. It says, this demonstrates your ability to contribute constructively to the discussion and work towards a collective goal. So what a great way to start your sentence. Okay, navigating turn-taking in conversations. Turn-taking. The worst thing is to have someone just talk at you and you don't know when to interrupt. You have to learn to take turns in conversation. Uh, some of you have heard me um, compare conversation to tennis. I have a video about it. I'll try to find that and link it in the description. Tennis is very much like conversation. You say something, you hit the ball. The other person listens, says something, and hits the ball back. It should be a back and forth. I, I just can't stand it when I talk to someone and it's just, just constant speaking, 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 and there's just this flow that doesn't stop and you don't give the person opportunity to speak there has to be pauses and there has to be meaningful conversation so let's look at the uh, taking turns aspect you need to include pauses 
gestures, which is hand movements, like, oh, I like that just a little bit. Also intonation patterns of the ups and downs in conversation that signal when it's appropriate to speak or when it's your turn to contribute to the conversation. So have pauses, let the person know, okay, um, I'll take your opinion now. I can listen to your opinion, go ahead. Uh, also the rises in questions when we fall at the end of sentences, lets the person know we're, we're done. And of course, listening. That's still important. We talked about maintaining eye contact, also nodding to show understanding. I do this quite a lot when I conduct group classes or one-on-one. -on -one. I nod often. I do it more naturally, but nodding is just saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I listen to you or even making that sound, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's them know you're listening. And then asking relevant questions to further or push the conversation forward. Okay, so additionally, Familiarize yourself with conversational phrases that facilitate turn-taking, that allow you to have a conversation. What can you say? May I add something? So that's a polite way. I want to add to what you said. Could I share my perspective? That's important. It could also uh, show that you're being polite when you say, could I share? Okay, so those are some great questions. Also, what do you think? Do you have any thoughts on this that's encouraging other people to contribute in a group? Expressing opinions and ideas. Okay. So in my opinion, I believe that or from my perspective, we talked about that earlier, how to share your opinion instead of I think. Then when you have to agree or disagree, I agree with you. That's a good point. I think so too. If you disagree, you can say, I see your point, so we're acknowledging. I see your point, but I think, and that's okay. I understand your perspective, but in my opinion, or I'm afraid I have a different view. This is disagreeing without saying, you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't like what you're saying, you're dumb. <laughs> this is a better way of showing that you disagree. Offering suggestions, how can you do it? How about instead of do what I want or I think, this is better, softer. How about we go to McDonald's for lunch instead of the seafood restaurant? Or what if we go to McDonald's for lunch? Or have you considered hiring someone to help you with your extra work? Have you considered instead of, I think you should do this, so you don't come across as very forceful? Expressing preferences, again, without saying, this is what I want to do. How about I prefer, I enjoy, I'm really into. What do these phrases do? They allow you to share your personal preferences and interests and also create a deeper connection with others. So that's important. I prefer, I enjoy, I'm really into instead of I want or I think or you need to. This is a much better way. And then finally, seeking clarification. Again, what if you don't understand? Just ask, could you ex please explain? I didn't quite catch that. Could you repeat or could you say that another way? I'm not sure I understand. Can you elaborate? If you want more details, you can ask them, can you elaborate? So elaborate means say more because you might not have all the information you need. Again, you have to help the listener. So use some of these phrases if you're not, and this will help you become more confident. And just try it out and test it out. Okay, very nice. Um, chapter five will leave for the next video, making and accepting invitations. All right, see you in the next one. Remember, check the link, uh, the links in the description for other resources and other links to other videos that are relevant. See you next time. Thanks for watching.